Someone said memories are like time travel to the past, and dreams are time travel into the future. Well, we have definitely traveled into the future. A lot of people said building a 100 plus qubit quantum computer was just a pipe dream. We wouldn't get there until decades from now. And here we are. Out of the crazy ideas of quantum mechanics, this, this real thing, in just 10 years. Such a fantastic example of this scientific method. Hypothesizing, testing, inventing, experimenting with all the ways to make qubits, and how they could work and how they could look. And also how often you're gonna get stuck. There's so much history in these qubits. Charlie Bennett and Rolf Landauer got us all started on this. Asking things like, is there a fundamental limit to the energy efficiency of computing? And is information processing thermodynamically reversible? Only the kinds of things that a physicist would ask. I remember going to see our first quantum laboratory and the modesty what the laboratory environment looked like, but the enormous level of risk and difficulty of what was behind the scenes of that modest laboratory. Our first quantum device and quantum system, and the basis of all our future quantum computers. Certainly, I'd say one of my fondest memories involves studying this one, actually a single qubit system that we had back then. The effective temperature that this device exhibited was far higher than what the fridge temperature said it was. And we've tried numerous experiments over years to try to address this, but nothing really seemed to work very well. The community started to get a sense that maybe there is some other radiation, black body radiation that might be causing this. We took this idea back and we shared it with one of our engineers, Jim Rosen. Uh, and he didn't believe it at all. He actually just uh, said, I'm going to prove to you that this is baloney. Uh, so he did something really, really drastic. He took the entire package and he bricked it into this, what we call, echosorb material. It's made out of the same absorptive material that you find on stealth fighters. It's literally a one or two pound, almost looks like a paperweight almost, a very heavy object, and said, okay, cool this down and see how it looks. Amazingly, it was 10 times better than what we had before. Went from 500 nanoseconds to five microseconds. Easily the, the, the highest coherence time we'd ever measured at IBM. I remember calling at the time uh, our group lead, Mark Ketchin, on the phone. We were blasting loud music in the, in the lab, just really, really excited that we saw this. And uh, we told Jim, hey, look, we proved you exactly wrong. <laughs> the engineer said, I've never been more glad to be wrong. <laughs> Jay and Jerry's idea to put a quantum computer in the cloud was brilliant. It showed people it was real. The boldness of saying what felt like a laboratory experiment is going to be available to all of you now. I think it started by realizing that our colleagues needed this tool to do their research. What we learned was certainly that there was a huge appetite for accessing cloud-deployed systems. I mean, within the first few weeks, there were people running algorithms. That first year, we started to see exactly how much research was starting to be generated, what the community uh, was, was bubbling into. You know, that was fun itself, you know, finding <laughs> the first, like, quantum trolls on our little community forum. But, you know, it's where we basically saw that this has so much legs in terms of expense and, and who wants to use this and who wants to learn from this. It changed how we looked at things completely. The field was enormously focused about what we could do when we had the so-called perfect quantum computer. But now, we had generation after generation of new capabilities. And so you had remarkable algorithms, but all of those were designed with this perfect machine in, in mind. 
But now we had these devices that were being made available. They were smaller, they were noisy. So how can we benefit from them? That was the time when the team did the simulation of beryllium hydride, which back then was the largest chemistry simulation that was ever done on a quantum computer. It taught us about um, the promise for scaling, and uh, it really opened the door for uh, exploring more applications in chemistry, more applications in physics. You know, it's the same, necessity is the mother of invention. We are so bound by how we see the world and how we experience the world. But how many people realize that when they're using a quantum computer, they're going into extra dimensions? Extra dimensions are always presented as such a science fiction-y thing. But the mathematics of quantum mechanics is very clearly multidimensional. This abstraction in mathematics is how nature operates. It sounds like science fiction, but it's not. It's just science. All right, we're starting to get our Robbie data coming in here. Let's take a look, see if we see any that look. We've just protected. Yeah, they, uh, they're all looking about right here. Everything so far you could have done with a classical computer. We already knew the outcome of every experiment. But now, we actually can't predict what the eagle will find. Appearances are looking pretty good, too. So, uh, is it alive? It's like all 127 cubits are alive. All right, congratulations. If you want to understand what these quantum computers with more than 100 qubits can do, the only way is to use them. Today, I am excited to present to you the first commercial quantum processor to break the 100 qubit barrier. Meet Eagle, our new 127 qubit chip. For the first time in history, we've entered the realm where a classical supercomputer can no longer fully simulate the behavior of a quantum chip. Eagle will let us explore truly uncharted computational territory. 2019 brought the 27 qubit Falcon processor, which introduced the heavy hex qubit arrangement. Arranging qubits on the edges and corners of hexagons allowed us to reduce errors caused by interference between qubits. In 2020, we were able to build Hummingbird, our 65 qubit device thanks to multiplexing. That's the ability to read out multiple qubits with a single wire, which greatly reduced the number of components that needed to go inside of the fridge. Eagle incorporates both of these advances and also takes advantage of IBM's deep expertise in chip manufacturing and packaging to set the stage for scalable quantum computing. Even the quantum processor's packaging is important for scaling. Quantum chips traditionally require a tangle of wires that have to be directed outward to the edge of the chip. But state-of-the-art research allowed us to incorporate 3D integration into Eagle. This allowed us to put chip components and wiring on multiple physical levels that make the path towards a 1,000 qubit quantum computer possible. Next year, the IBM Quantum team plans to release a 433 qubit processor called Osprey. And in 2023, they plan on debuting Condor, a 1,121 qubit processor. Condor will be an inflection point. 
it will allow us to explore error correction and dive even further into the realm of quantum advantage. Everyone always talks about the number of qubits, which is definitely important for running more complex calculations. But qubit count, scale, is just one facet of the way we measure a quantum processor's performance. Eagle represents improvements that will allow us to press forward on all three of our performance metrics – scale, quality, and speed. For improved quality, Eagle uses the latest advances in qubit fabrication, control electronics, and software that will help us maximize its quantum volume. For increased speed, Eagle will seamlessly integrate with classical computing workflows, using Qiskit runtime and other improvements to maximize the number of quantum circuits it can run per second. It's important to continue to develop the software systems to match the hardware advances. The OpenCASM3 assembly language is already allowing developers to run circuits incorporating both classical and quantum instructions. We plan on developing new circuit libraries tailored to fields like finance, machine learning, and chemistry, making it easier than ever for developers to incorporate quantum into business workflows. So, what can we expect from this step into uncharted computational territory? We hope to use Eagle to explore the realm of quantum advantage, where quantum computers can tackle problems faster and with fewer resources than classical computers. And quantum advantage might be coming sooner than you think. By integrating quantum with our classical high-performance computing resources, we will have a powerful combination that will open an entirely new path to study physics, chemistry, and machine learning. The past 10 years have shown how fundamental scientific research has created a potentially paradigm-shifting advance in computing. But what do the next 10 years have in store? We dream of a future with frictionless quantum computing, where users can code a quantum computer without having to know about the intricacies of the quantum processor. We envision developers across all levels of the quantum computing stack relying upon our advanced hardware with a cloud-based API, working seamlessly with high-performance computing resources to push the limits. But developing this larger system poses a challenge. We believe that Eagle is the last processor that will fit inside of our IBM Quantum System 1. And so, we are excited to unveil a concept for the future of scalable quantum computation. The IBM Quantum System 2. System 2 is a bridge to the future of quantum computing. IBM Quantum Engineers took a holistic approach and will be capable of housing the upcoming 400 and 1,000 qubit processors, and even processors we haven't begun to develop yet. System 2 takes a hexagonal form. This scalable, modular structure will allow us to bring fridges close together. It will give flexibility to design even larger quantum systems by linking processors together. System 2 represents a glimpse into what the future of quantum computing looks like, a true quantum data center. By following this roadmap, we think that by 2030, Companies and users will be running a trillion quantum circuits a day. And we hope that quantum computers will be providing real-world benefits, solving some of the world's most important problems. I want to thank you, IBM Summit attendees, for joining us on this journey over the past 10 years. We have made tremendous advances thanks to you our global community of users and the IBM Quantum Network. We hope that you'll stay with us for the next 10 years and beyond as we continue to transform computing together.